Vilma, an ordinary girl, a human rights heroine. Written by Jennifer Nicholson and Cindy Regidor. Illustrations by Joaquin Ruiz. This book is dedicated to Vilma for inspiring us through her life, her actions, and her being, and for being an example of how the world is a better place thanks to those who believe in justice, hope, and human rights. And to Gal for modeling what it means to be a peace educator and empowering us on our path together towards promoting and defending human rights. My name is Vilma. I was born in 1938 in Acoyapa, a small rural town in Chantales, Nicaragua. Like everybody, I have some fun memories from my childhood and some not so fun ones. I remember that my mom always taught me that I was no less than anybody else and that we are all equal and should have the same opportunities in life. Like so many girls my age, I couldn't wait to go to school but it didn't take long before the other children started picking on me. I didn't understand why. My mom said this was because when I was born, she and my dad weren't married. Back then, if you were born to unmarried parents, you were treated differently. My mom said, you are no less than anyone else. When I remembered this, my heart felt sad. These things have a way of sticking with you. No one should be bullied like that. When I was seven years old, I was finally old enough to receive my first communion. I was very excited because this was a very special moment as a Catholic. But the day before the celebration, the school called and said I had to receive my communion using my mom's last name and not my father's, like everyone else just because I was born to unmarried parents. My mom felt angry and said I would take my communion by myself instead. My mom said, you are no less than anyone else. When I remembered this, my heart felt confused. These things have a way of sticking with you. No one should be excluded like that. I had a very good father. I was proud to be the daughter of one of the most important men in town. He was often put in prison as a punishment for defending our country's rights and freedoms. I remember the nights when they would come to take him away. I would go visit him and bring him food. My mom said, we are all equal. When I remembered this, my heart felt powerless. These things have a way of sticking with you. No one should be oppressed like that. Despite everything, I worked hard in school and was always a top student. When it was time for me to go to secondary school, I planned to go to the best school along with my friends. But once again, being born to unmarried parents, I did not have the same rights as everyone else. My mom said, we are all equal. When I remembered this, my heart felt angry. These things have a way of sticking with you. No one should be rejected like that. My mom said I could do whatever the rest of the people could do. It was clear to me that the laws in our country treated people differently. So when I was 18, I chose to become a lawyer. In the university, many of my classmates stood up against those who were ruling the country unfairly. They gathered in the street to protest peacefully. Some of them were put in prison. Some of them even died. I joined in the struggle. I defended my classmates. I was the only woman. When I remembered what my mom said, my heart felt encouraged. We can let these things shape us for the better. Everyone should be free to express themselves. In 
In one of my first cases as a lawyer, I chose to defend an Indigenous community. The Indigenous people were the first people living in Nicaragua. They were fighting for lands that were stolen from them. One person died during the protests and the Indigenous leaders were blamed. Many see Indigenous people as lesser human beings who have no rights. I do not. I see them as equals. I defended them and we won. When I remembered what my mom said, my heart felt determined. We can let these things shape us for the better. Everyone is worth the same and should have the same rights. Soon after, I chose to join a group of people who were defending the freedoms of our nation. Like my father, I was put in jail for that reason. I was separated from my husband and daughter. I was tortured. They threatened to kill me. These were the hardest times, but I still held on to my beliefs. Years later, when I became Nicaragua's first female judge in the Supreme Court, I even defended the same people who arrested and tortured me. They weren't bad people, even though they did hurtful things. They too deserved to be treated fairly at their trial. When I remembered what my mom said, my heart felt empowered. We can let these things shape us for the better. Everyone has the right to be protected from harm. Many times I have chosen to take the side of the victims, even when it has meant standing up against the people I used to admire. When a woman accused her stepfather of abusing her, I decided to defend her. What made the case so difficult was that he was the leader of the group I belonged to and my idol in our country's struggle for freedom. But when someone misuses their power, we have to point it out. Women's rights continue to be one of my biggest battles. When I remembered what my mom said, my heart felt passionate. We can let these things shape us for the better. Everyone has the right to be safe. My name is Vilma. I won't ever quit defending human rights. It's not an easy path to choose and the results are slow in coming. You need to have a personal motivation to keep going. The tears of joy that people shed when we make a wrong right are what drive me. We all have those things that stick with us, but we can choose to let them shape us for the better. I'm an ordinary person, but I do what I can. We can all find ways to make a difference. About Vilma Nunez de Escorcia. Vilma was born on November 25, 1938, in Acoyapa, Chantales, Nicaragua. When she was 20 years old, she enrolled in the National Autonomous University of Nicaragua in Leon to study law. She is one of the survivors of the Students' Massacre on July 23, 1959, a historical event where four students died and 43 were injured by the National Guard during a peaceful protest. In 1979, she was captured by the National Guard for being a member of the Sandinista movement. She was tortured and prosecuted for being falsely accused of hiding weapons. Later on, during the 1980s, she served as the first female judge and vice president of Nicaragua's Supreme Court. In 1990, Vilma created Sanid, the Nicaraguan Human Rights Center. For more than 25 years, this organization has defended the rights of Nicaraguan people. The center also teaches people about their rights so that they can defend themselves and find ways to defend others. Do you know your rights and responsibilities? On December 10, 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations accepted and announced the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This is an agreement to be followed and remembered always by the people and countries of the world to make a better world, a better life, and more freedom for all people. There are 30 rights in total. 
Start by getting to know the ones that are brought up in this book. Which ones are missing? What can you do to help promote and defend these rights for yourself and for others? Everyone is free, and we should all be treated in the same way. Everyone is equal despite differences in skin color, sex, religion, or language, for example. Everyone has the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. No one has the right to hurt you or to torture you. Everyone has the right to be treated equally by the law. The law is the same for everyone. It should be applied in the same way to all. Everyone has the right to ask for legal help when their rights are not respected. No one has the right to imprison you unjustly or expel you from your own country. Everyone has the right to a fair and public trial. Everyone has the right to say what they think and to give and receive information. Everyone has the right to take part in meetings and to join associations in a peaceful way. Everyone has the right to help choose and take part in the government of their country. Everyone has the right to go to school. Everyone must respect the social order that is necessary for all these rights to be available. Everyone must respect the rights of others, the community, and public property. No one has the right to take away any of the rights in this declaration. This book is a project for the Human Rights Education course facilitated by Dr. Gal Harmat as part of the Peace Education Program in the Department of Peace Studies at the University for Peace in Costa Rica.